Where was Rivendell when the Westfold fell? Or more broadly, if the elves, Elrond, Galadriel and so on were so amazing, why didn't they at least help out a bit when Sauron was attacking Minas Tirith? Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we cover the Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's wider legendarium in depth, as well as A Song of Ice and Fire and The Witcher. If you're new, welcome. We all know the question, where was Gondor when the Westfold fell? I've answered that one elsewhere, but what about the elves? They're supposed to be hugely powerful and implacably opposed to Sauron, but they basically stayed at home during the War of the Ring. Why? And to get something out of the way first, if you're remembering back to the film version of The Two Towers and that group of elves from Lothlorien that came to fight at Helm's Deep, that didn't happen in the books. In fact, it was quite heavily criticised at the time by Tolkien aficionados. Thematically, humanity's courage and strength in holding firm against such odds there showed that they were ready to inherit their place as the preeminent race in Middle-earth. It was time for the dominion of man. The elves were fading and leaving the continent, and humanity no longer needed elves to bail them out. Which is, of course, the first point. It was literarily important that the elves didn't just come in and save the day like they had in the past, either there or on the Pelennor fields. Sure, there were some non-human individuals who had quite an impact. Gimli, Legolas and Gandalf all spring to mind, but this was humanity's victory. But as well as a literary reason, there are in-world reasons too why the elves did not march to war. First, there weren't many elves left. Tolkien doesn't ever go into specifics on numbers, but at the end of the Third Age, in that part of Middle-earth, there were only really four elf strongholds left. Lothlorien, Thranduil's shrunken realm in northern Mirkwood, Elrond's last homely house at Rivendell, and Curdan's community around the Grey Havens. Estimates of the populations or armies of these places vary wildly, but there is no doubt that they are significantly down on what they were in, say, the Second Age with the last alliance of elves and men. Elves don't reproduce particularly quickly, and there was a steady stream of them heading west throughout the Third Age. And there's also no doubt that whatever armies they could field would be dwarfed by Sauron's. Second, the elves couldn't help defend Gondor or Rohan because they themselves were under attack from Sauron's forces. The story in The Lord of the Rings understandably focuses on the battles our heroes are in at Helm's Deep and Minas Tirith, but there were other battles raging elsewhere that Tolkien tells us about in passing. For example, Sauron's forces in Dol Guldur tried to invade Lothlorien three times in less than two weeks, with the second attempt being timed to happen at the same time as an attack on Thranduil's forces in Mirkwood. The third reason, or set of reasons, why the elves didn't send armies to help Gondor or Rohan was that their leaders all individually had good reasons for staying at home, as well as the defending their own homeland reason, that is. Kurdan at the Grey Havens was effectively the escape plan for the elves. That was where they set off from when they sailed west, and elves were still sailing west at that point, leaving the cares and wars of Middle-earth behind them. The Grey Havens was one place the elves wouldn't want left unguarded. And even if Kurdan had wanted to march to war, given how far west the Grey Havens are, he simply wouldn't have got there in time. Minas Tirith was well over a thousand miles away. Elrond and Galadriel had another reason for staying at home, their rings of power. Though we don't know all of the ins and outs of how their magic worked, we do know that they helped preserve and protect Rivendell and Lothlorien. Galadriel says this, for example, Do not think that only by singing amid the trees, nor even by the slender arrows of elven bows, is this land of Lothlorien maintained and defended against its enemy. I say to you, Frodo, that even as I speak to you, I perceive the Dark Lord and know his mind, or all of his mind that concerns the elves, and he gropes ever to see me and my thought. But still the door is closed. She lifted up her white arms and spread out her hands towards the east in a gesture of rejection and denial. Erendil, the evening star, most beloved of the elves, shone clear above. Its rays glanced upon a ring about her finger. It glittered like polished gold overlaid with silver light, and a white stone in it twinkled as if the even star had come down to rest upon her hand. Frodo gazed at the ring with awe, for suddenly it seemed to him that he understood. 
So that's Curdan, Elrond and Galadriel accounted for. But what about Thranduil? He seemed happy enough to lead a small army off to the Lonely Mountain in The Hobbit to try and grab some of that sweet hoard of gold left by Smaug. Could he not head off south? Well, no. And for what we might today call mental health reasons. He was part of the last alliance of elves and men who faced Sauron at the end of the Second Age, and what he saw there scarred him. We read that there was in Thranduil's heart a still deeper shadow. He had seen the horror of Mordor and could not forget it. If ever he looked south, its memory dimmed the light of the sun. This is almost certainly why he turned a blind eye to the growing threat of Dol Guldur in the south of his own forest, and definitely why the idea of sending an army south to face the might of Mordor would never have crossed his mind. So that's why the elves did not send armies to help Gondor or Rohan. But that doesn't mean that they didn't help at all. Elrond and Galadriel in particular, they both did so much more than just host the Fellowship for a time. I'll do a video on the importance of Galadriel's gifts at some point, but it's fair to say that without them, the Fellowship wouldn't have got far. The Lembas kept Frodo and Sam alive in Mordor, the file of Galadriel helped them defeat Shelob. Legolas shot down the descending fell beast with the bow that he had been given, Pippin's elven brooch helped the three hunters follow the hobbits, not idly do the leaves of Lorien fall, and so on. She also sent Gwai here to pick up the resurrected Gandalf and healed him before sending him on his way, and sent prophetic messages to Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli. Elrond didn't just choose the Fellowship and send them off on their way with wise counsel, he also defeated the Black Riders with that water magic on the borders of his land, reforged Narsil into Anduril, sent his sons Eladan and Elrohir to help Aragorn, advised him to go via the Paths of the Dead so that he could get that ghost army, provided remote advice to the War Council that took place after the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. He did a lot. In fact, you could easily argue that Elrond and Galadriel, between them, influenced events more than many of the characters who were physically closer to the action for longer. They both, in their own ways, had a hazy sense of what was needed and provided that. Galadriel provided a rope to Sam rather than an army, but that rope was needed. Elrond sent his sons, not an army, but his sons were what was needed. And this is actually very Tolkien. What difference would a few more elves have made at Helm's Deep, the Pelennor Fields or Moranan? Actually not much. It wouldn't have changed the outcome of any of those battles. What mattered was not the size of the armies, but the courage of the hobbits. Where were the elves when the Westfold fell? Exactly where they should have been, defending their own lands, and doing exactly what they should have been doing, supporting the humans and hobbits as best they could from afar. That's what made the difference. If you'd like more videos diving into Tolkien's Legendarium, there's a playlist on the left of your screen now. Or if you want to support this channel, thank you. The best way to do that is via Patreon. That's the link on the right of your screen. That's all for this time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.